are one by one becoming plugged in, hooked up and often fully automated. Even the potted plant in the corner wants to get in on the action. It's a Bluetooth smart low energy plant sensor and what it does is it senses four different areas within a garden, either indoors or outdoors. It'll sense sunlight, it'll sense temperature, moisture in the soil as well as fertiliser in the soil and it will take a reading of those four sensors every 15 minutes and it will send via Bluetooth low energy back to your smart device, whether it be your tablet, your smartphone, etc. Green thumbs are no longer needed because the readings can be used in conjunction with a database of 6,000 common plants to ensure yours receives the best treatment. But how do we know this sort of device will become part of our everyday lives? After all, people have been talking about and demonstrating would-be connected products in the living room, kitchen and elsewhere for decades. There's one object at the centre of this new mini-revolution in home automation, which means that as a concept it may stick around this time. The object? A smartphone, ideally suited to bridging the gap between humans and appliances. Take the ordinary household bulb. Increasingly, they can be controlled from the comfort of your armchair. The Bluetooth light bulb is great because uh, there are billions of smartphones out there with Bluetooth built in that are capable of controlling the, uh, the light bulb. You can have multiple light bulbs in your house and multiple users of the light bulbs and they can all control the light bulb from their phone, dimming it, changing its color. The great thing is that it's something that's built into everybody's phone. You don't need anything special other than the light bulb. You plug it in, connect to it and off you go. Bluetooth is not the only method of communication that gadgets can use. Z-Wave technology can blanket an entire home with radio frequency signals. So the ability to control lights, appliances, locks, basically anything that you would normally handle individually in your home can be controlled by Z-Wave. And it, the technology is very strong because it's a mesh network and the more devices you have in the home, the stronger the mesh. Z-Wave is an improvement on the older X10 system, which can be slower and more unstable. But one drawback of the Z-Wave experience is that its gadgets are not internationally compatible because the RF frequency used by the system differs slightly around the world. That's one of the reasons why a Wi-Fi route might be a better option. Belkin International thinks so. It's developed a whole line of products under the brand Wemo, including a power socket that can be manipulated remotely to turn on or off any electronic device plugged into it. There's also a baby monitor that can be heard by mummy across the hall or daddy across the globe. Wi-Fi is in most households today. The user experience with a Wi-Fi product is really simple. You plug it in, you hook it up to the network, and then you're good. Um, you don't have to do anything more. You don't have to install a bridge product and then have another product talking to that bridge product and then that bridge product talks to the internet. We just plug our products in and two minutes later, we've got the product working on the internet, on your home network. With all of these Wi-Fi items in your house, you might start to worry about bandwidth. Don't worry, says Matt Rogers, the co-creator of the self-learning, always connected Nest thermostat. Most of these products don't use a lot of bandwidth. They can be very infrequently, uh, you know, bytes at a time. It's, it's not a lot. I mean, it's nowhere near as like streaming video. If you could stream video at home, you could use any of these products. But whilst your home network might be able to cope easily with the extra data traffic whilst it's up and running, what happens if your network goes down completely? Maybe controlling your entire home full of gadgets from afar suddenly seems a little less appealing. Ian Hardy bringing us all back down to earth with that final thought. OK, next up it's time for the very best bits of the web and top mobile apps of the week. Here comes Kate Russell with Webscape. Moon River. On the 25th of April there will be a partial lunar eclipse visible in parts of Europe, Africa, Asia and Australia. It won't be as dramatic as a full eclipse, only about 2% of the moon will pass through the shadow of the Earth. You can find out more at Moon Giant, an excellent resource for anyone interested in lunar activity, as well as eclipse calendars and explanations about lunar phases or phenomena such as the blue moon. An animation on the homepage shows the moon's position at any day and time in the past, present or future. me. 
If it's too cloudy where you are to see the eclipse, you could always try searching for clips of the event online. Google has released a really nice site that steps you through the history and basic mechanics of how the modern web becomes searchable so that anyone can understand it. One thing Google isn't short of are blogs. Blogs about cats, blogs about boats, there are even blogs about blogging. Tumblr is among the most popular platforms. It hosts 90 million blogs that generate more than 89 million new posts every day. But no matter how brilliant those posts are, many tens of thousands of them will never be read. That's something Glypho wants to fix with a publishing platform entwined with a social environment to take the strain out of promoting your posts. As well as letting you build an internal network in all the usual ways, the platform has deep integration with all of the leading social networks, which makes sharing your content one click simple. It's a nice interface too, for both browsing and creating, with a hassle-free setup that involves no themes or plugins. I've also been very impressed by how engaged the site creators are with feedback. And with smartphone apps apparently in the pipeline too, this is a fledgling social space to watch. With so many social connections, it can be hard keeping up. So, socialstudios.tv has come up with a novel idea. Your own personalised news roundup of your Facebook events. Hi, I'm Noah Tishby. Welcome to your show. After authorising, the app goes off and populates your TV show with all the favourite status updates from your timeline and any birthdays your friends have got coming up, complete with their celebrity birth twins. It's the moment we've been waiting for. Which one of your friends is the funniest, the most interesting or just the most popular? Let's check it out. I love the way it turns your friend's status popularity into an Oscars-style nomination reveal. It's presented as classic American pop culture TV and is a really fun way to catch up with Facebook essentials in the last five minutes of your lunch break. That's the end of this edition of your show. I'm Noah Tishby. Join me again tomorrow for all the social news that's important to you. Bye. What is Bitcoin? If you've been intrigued recently by all the talk about online currency Bitcoin and want to know what the blazes it's all about, point your browser at weusecoins.com, where you'll find a really simple guide to understanding this disruptive global finance technology. You can use them in every country, your account cannot be frozen, and there are no prerequisites or arbitrary limits. Thanks for all you've done. And LJ looked at a camera that digitally records your life earlier. But what happens to all your online assets when you're dead? It's something Google has been pondering and last week released an inactive account manager feature dubbed Google Afterlife on the social web that lets you bequeath the data from Google accounts such as Blogger, Drive, Gmail, Google+, Picasa and YouTube to someone you trust after you're gone. Thank you, Kate. And those links are all available as usual at our website, bbc.co.uk slash click. Please do feel free to get in touch about anything that you've seen today. You can email click at bbc.co.uk. You can tweet us at BBC Click and you'll also find us on Facebook and Google+. But that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time.